Okay, this is going to be part two, I guess. <clears throat> I'm using uh, Greg's, and I'll put links to his video down below. His auto reversing screwdriver here um, in the land of fishing reels, it's referred to as what? I forget already. As a worm drive. But uh, Greg swears that he's uh, ref used to refer to it as a screwdriver in his business, and uh, he can tell you that story if he wants to. Anyway, you have these uh, two prowls, or in his case, followers, that uh, ride in that. I'll turn this on in case you're not familiar with what we're talking about here. There we go. So you can see as that turns, the two followers just go back and forth. Now I'm using that up and down motion to control the legs. We have ratchets in the feet. And you can see it's a very good walker. Now I haven't really decided exactly what I'm going to do with the body part of this or anything yet. Let's, uh, let's disconnect this for the moment. I'll, uh, I'll take some of this apart in case some of you want to see what's going on a little bit better. So I just have rods temporarily holding this together. This lower body part is a temporary thing too. Drop that down. Kick that out. So here is the... Uh, the screwdriver unit itself, and I'm running it vertically. Uh, Greg's already done a version with the linear shuffle walker where he hooked it this way just to move the legs, which initially was what I'd asked him about because it's the easiest way to do it. So I thought, what the heck, let's try and uh, do it vertically and do a walking robot. Okay, so there's the, the main motor unit. And by the way, all these parts were printed on the uh, Bamboo Labs A1 Mini. This uh, part here, the self-reversing screw, if you will, prints vertically just like you're seeing it sitting in there with supports. And once, uh, and I just printed in uh, the standard setting, which means uh, general PLA and 0 0.2 for the layer height. Nothing special at all. Came out really clean. Um, told us to go ahead and put supports everywhere, which means it basically was just supporting these upper parts, these overhangs. So when I pulled the support away, I just ran a little sandpaper on those upper parts, and it was good to go. There wasn't anything else to do about it. This uh, motor frame part prints flat like this as well. I run some supports up because of the two holes here. I didn't want to do a sacrificial hole thing, and I ran supports up. To support the hole on top for the same reason I didn't want to do a sacrificial hole that I had to clean out because the AM Mini is already three to five times faster than normal printers and has a better print quality so I don't mind doing supports now. It used to bother me. So this is a just a temporary idea of a, a body to hold everything together, a lower part of a body. So on the leg parts there's a shell, which I haven't glued down on purpose because I might want to do some modifications to these. And I'm pulling out some pins. There's the camera. Pulling out some pins that pin it all together here. There we go. And I don't want to lose the pins because right now I don't have any extra brass rod. Okay, stay there. That's the shoe part. So on the leg part is uh, one piece, which I actually uh, print uh, this side down on the bed like that, and uh, do supports for the openings around there. Then there's this uh, rear part, which is uh, a leg brace, linkage, if you will. Now this rear pin that held on to this piece of linkage. Maybe I'll hook that back up so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. Let me see if I can let me see if I can hook this back up with the camera running. Almost. It's getting close. I'm trying to hit a hole that I can't see. Because if I Got it to where I could see it, my head would be blocking the camera. <laughs> so 
So it's just a, just a guess and a miss here. There we go. I hit it. So this pin that normally holds this linkage also holds this piece right here, which you can see how the counterweight on it. That's the counterweight because it's heavy. It's pushing down, which is raising it up there. So as the foot moves, get it to where maybe you can see it. You can see how that's going to ratchet. So that's the rear one. Now the front one's a little bit easier. It has its own rod right there, which goes through there. And you can see how the front ratchet works. So the two of them together allow a foot to move forward but lock it when it goes back. So that's what's going on in the feet. Both feet are the same. Of course, there's a left and right on the leg in order to fit onto the uh, screw drive. So next I kind of have to decide what I want to do the, with the body design. I, we'd like to take, I made these posts uh, extra long so they'd be more than enough to engage with the leg but also engage with something else. I just haven't decided what. I've got this nice linear up-down movement. What do I want to put on the front of the robot? I mean, I could move little shutters across holes and do changing colors, or I could do a, a ratchet thing where it goes up and it turns a wheel every time it goes up and advances a number or so. I don't know. I haven't given that enough thought. I need to decide what I want to do with that. Oh, and if you hadn't watched the earlier one, this blue TT gear motor, it's the 90 to 1 gear ratio, or as they like to call it, 1 to 90 gear ratio. In this case, when you saw it walking, it was running on three uh, AAA batteries. And uh, trying to remember now, I think it was drawing about 130 milliamps, which is fairly standard, low to standard for uh, a toy. Actually, being that it's uh, four and a half volts, that is low. But um, not bad, not bad at all.